We welcome back our good friend Jim McGreevy, former governor of the great state of New Jersey and chairman of New Jersey Ranchy Corporation. Good to see you, Jim. It's good to be here. Thank you, Stephen. Jim, a report you and your team just put out, um, New Jersey Opioid Addiction Report, a modern plague. Describe why it, what is it and why does it matter so much? St Stephen, the advent of synthetic opioids, fentanyl and carfentanyl, has been a profound game changer. Um, fentanyl is 50 times, carfentanyl is 100 times stronger than morphine. It's a synthetic opioid. It's What's this, uh, sorry, sorry, Jim. Fentanyl, I know. What's the other one? Carfentanyl, which is even a stronger version of fentanyl. It's what they use in Africa to take down a full-grown African bull elephant in 20 minutes. And this synthetic opioid is so powerful that DEA no longer uses the dogs. Agents now wear bodysuits because the fact that three grains of sand, the equivalent of that fentanyl, um, a, a client can survive, but four grains, you suffer overdose and death. And now the naltrexone, uh, which we use to bring back people temporarily, you need four administrations. So this is so powerful. I mean, I just did, um, last week, we just did toxicology reports at our nine reentry sites, and there's no more heroin in the heroin anymore in the sense that people are consuming the synthetic opioid mixed with whatever derivative. And so that this is so powerful, so corrosive, that it's, it's destroying lives faster and more permanently than anything we've ever seen. Jim, but, but your organization, um, dealing with reentry, those who have been incarcerated sure. are coming back into society, what is the connection between the opioid crisis and the incarcerated population? So in, there are two, two points. One, that, that people coming out of prison or out of jail are 130 times more likely to die because they're coming out and all of a sudden they're going to go back to the same usage, the same amount, and they, they take it they overdose, and they die. The second point in the state of New Jersey, we have one of the highest conflations. If you're in prison in the state of New Jersey, there's an 80% chance you're an addict or alcoholic. And if you're an addict or alcoholic, there's a high probability that you're going to wind your way into the criminal justice system or death. There's a high conflation between addiction and imprisonment in the state of New Jersey. And what we saw in this report, Stephen, is that Thanks to the leadership of Senator Vitale and Governor Christie. Senator Joe Vitale. Senator Joe Vitale. Chairman of the Senate Health Committee, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, and, 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 and Governor Christie on a bipartisan basis said, all right, we need to provide for treatment. Why for would you be talking about the previous governor in this? Because I, I think the, the governor did a phenomenal job in sort of grappling with the addiction crisis and at least bringing everybody to the table. But what we did is we required in the state of New Jersey, 28 days of residential treatment and up to three months of intensive outpatient. But fentanyl is so powerful. Dr. Gasparin of Harvard said it takes 14 months. After one administration, it takes 14 months for your brain to go back to where it was before that administration. That there's such significant neural damage to the mind. And so that 28 days is not gonna solve it. So we've been working with Blue Cross Blue Shield and Suzanne Horizon. Kuznis, Her Horizon, uh, and who's been like... <laughs> Suzanne is a policy person? Yeah, I, I think she's like one of the 10 smartest people in the state of New Jersey. Uh, but, you know, to realize what was happening is young men and women were going into treatment for 28 days, coming out, using again, relapsing, going into treatment 28 days, coming out, using again. And it was happening six, seven, eight times. And then, Stephen, they die. And what so, works, Jim? well, we, we looked at the best practices in Rhode Island and Massachusetts and Texas, and what they say, it has to be a year model. It doesn't mean that the person's going away for a year. They can be in, they can be in an Oxford house. They can be in a, in a residential program, but they have to see the same doctor. They have to see the same psychiatrist. And so, you know, what, what's happening in New Jersey is, I, Jim can go into Integrity House, and then I come out and I can go to Ava's Village and then I can come out and I can go to another facility. But my records aren't following me. You know, take for example, if, if you, were, had, you were a cancer patient and you had surgery, they the would, follow would follow you, the records would follow. Right. Your Why would it be chemo different with someone who's suffering, suffering from opioid addiction, heroin addiction? You know, addiction? I, I think, Stephen, candidly, it, it goes back to the fact that um, before President Bush and, and, and Senator Kennedy provided for parity between behavioral health and medical health, and candidly, our behavioral health system was fragmented, and we're suffering. We didn't from care that much, Jim. Did no, we? we didn't. And, and I can make Cut an argument. The chase. They we, didn't care we, that much. we didn't. We didn't care when black and brown people were suffering in the middle of a cocaine epidemic. And, and, and but 
Where are we now? What? Where are we now? I mean, you, you talked about Governor Christie. You served as governor. You talked about Senator Vitale. Where do you see the Governor Murphy administration on this issue in terms well, of addressing the issues you're raising right now in this report? Well, you know, God, uh, Carol Johnson, um, one of the commissioners, one of the, the commissioners of human cabinet. services, uh, Dr. Sharif of, of Department of Health, Commissioner of Health, Commissioner of Health. I believe they want to get this done, and uh, with the leadership of Joe Vitale, I believe we're going to move from a 28-day model to year model, so that. What would it take to do that? Is it legislation? It's legislation. It's legislation. Has and the governor Blue made a statement on this? Um, the governors responded to the report. The attorney generals responded to the report positively. Did they, did they acknowledge that they're committed to a year-long process? Um, I, I think and the that, economics involved in that. Well, it's not actually Blue it's Cross Blue Shield. It's not economics. No, no. At Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, Horizon will actually argue it's less expensive because what's happening. How can it be less expensive if you're because, in for longer and treatment no, no, costs more? Because what happens is, Stephen, is is that if you're in there for a short time up front and you have all the clinical, the medical, the psychiatric, and then you have a step-down model, and then you have a further step-down, you're back into the community, and you're working it, and you're productive. The point is, is like a family. We're, we're following you from the beginning to the end. Uh, and it's not the back and forth? No, it's, back not, it's, it's, it's not the in and out, in and, and out, in and out. Right. And so what happens is you're going to have medication-assisted treatment, and this is a big part of it. Uh, like I'm an old AA, NA guy, but this, these this is so powerful, the fentanyl, that you need Suboxone, you need Naltrexone in order to, to wean the person off. We need a different approach. You need a different approach, but you have to lock down that person. You have to be all over that person from beginning to end for that year, and that's with the doctor, the behavioral psychologist, and the psychiatrist. Before I let you go, increasing access to the drugs you're talking about, to the treatment you're talking about, biggest obstacle in the way of that, I've asked you this before, it, it hasn't happened. Um, it's frustrating because, it, you know, part of it is Medicaid and Carol Johnson. I think she's she's making great strides. I've said, you know, for my guys coming out of prison, they're they're dying. I have in my phone three photographs of men that have died this past week. I mean, this isn't cutting the Parkway in long. In connection with in connection, the opioid crisis. Yeah, in connection with opioid crisis, they come out of prison and they they they're using again, and then they overdose. And so, my point is. When, when people like Suzanne Kuznis says, we can do this better, we can do this less expensively, but we have to connect these systems. Mm. In Vermont, it's called a hub and spoke. You come and get your MAT, we'll connect What's you MAT? to medication-assisted treatment. You'll get right. your Suboxone, you'll get your Naltrexone, and then we'll connect you to housing, we'll connect you to, to benefits, we'll connect you to, to job so placement. Vermont's doing it well. Vermont's doing well, it's Massachusetts, like it can't be done. Texas. Other it can state, be done. Texas. Yeah. Where, it and can so, be done. And we're going, we're going to have 3,000 people. I went to a funeral about eight months ago with a family that lost their second child. To this? To this. And this is, Stephen, this was the most buttoned up, old fashioned Catholic family, did everything right. It's their kids with their knucklehead friends. I mean, the same way you and right. I at some point would have done Jägermeister or whatever stupid thing. Something stupid. The, the, this stuff, you don't come back from. Jim McGreevy. So we need to get this done. Thank you, Stephen. No, no. Every time you join us, um, not just we learn something new, we're challenged. And I hope the folks in the State House, where uh, you know better than most, respond. Not just Senator Vitale, but others. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, my friend. You got it. Good speed. Take care of yourself. Same Thank to you. you. Be right back right after this. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Agnes Varis NJTV studio at 2 Gateway. Funding has been provided by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Atlantic Health System, NJM Insurance Group, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, NJIT, New Jersey Resources, and by Summit Medical Group.